right, today I'm going to show you how to make your own custom Disney plot. So I know some of you might be familiar with standard single cell pipelines or something like that, where you input single cell data and outputs a Tisney plot. But how do you start with your own data matrix and make a Tisney plot from that? So I'm going to use my cat to make a Tisney plot. Where are you? Here she is. She doesn't really like being held. All right. Now. So of course I could just download a toy data set offline or through a Python module, but that would be boring. Instead, we're going to use this wonderful picture of Brixley and turn it into a data matrix. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you more than just making a Disney plot. I'm going to be showing you how to use NumPy and do some other cool stuff in Python. So if for some reason you hate cats, you can just skip to the latter half of this video where I actually make the Disney plot. All right, so if you want to follow along, go ahead and open a Jupyter Notebook and you can pick any picture. Just make sure it's not too high resolution. We're just going to start by importing a couple modules. So we're using CV2 to import the picture as a NumPy array. Of course, we need NumPy. And then we're using these to do the plotting and then sklearn to do the actual Disney algorithm. So let's go ahead and import the picture. I'm just going to import it as IM. And then you pass the path. And then the one thing that's kind of annoying about CV2 is that it imports as blue, green, red and not red, green, blue. So I'm just going to chop up IM and put it back together in the red, green, blue order. All right, so real quickly, if you're not familiar with NumPy and images, see we just have the Y dimension, so how many pixels in the Y direction, the X dimension, and then three layers for red, green, and blue. So we can actually plot this NumPy array with matplotlib. So here we see the image that I imported. Let me just make it a little bigger. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to turn this picture into chunks and each chunk is going to be one individual sample for our Disney plot. So we're just going to start at the very top left and then iterate to the right all the way down and then move down one and then repeat until we've turned this whole image into just a bunch of these pixel chunks. And then, like I said, we're going to have one chunk and since every chunk is going to have red, green, and blue, it's going to be three layers. We're going to separate the layers and then we're going to flatten them. So instead of having an X and Y dimension, they're just going to be turned into flat lists of numbers. And then we're going to sort each of these lists, so starting from the highest to the lowest within each list, because I want to compare the overall color content of each sample, not their positioning. All right, so like I said, we're going to loop over this image in the X and Y direction, and we're going to return two items. Let's just do an an out list, and then an average color list. And then we need to come up with a chunk size. Let's just try 10. So the X and Y dimension, so how many pixels in each chunk. So each chunk is going to have 100 pixels because there's 10 in the X and 10 in the Y direction. And then let me just write this nested loop. So we're going from zero to the length of the X dimension, but we don't want to go over or we'll get an error. And then we're stepping 10 at a time because that's our chunk size. And then the same thing for the Y dimension. And now we want to pull out the three red, green, and blue layers, sort them, and then put them back together in a linear list. Okay, so here I'm just flattening with NumPy flatten one layer of the chunk, the red layer, and I'm just using the Y coordinates from this nested loop and the X coordinate, and then taking a slice of the image, that's the X and Y plus the chunk size, so a 10 by 10 pixel chunk, and assigning this all to R after sorting it. 
So I'm just going to do the same thing for green and blue. You see the only thing we changed is the layer here. And then let's stick these back together. Okay, now we're going to append to out and the average color, but I don't want chunks that are going to be all white. And white and red, green, blue is 255, 255, 255. So we can just add a simple little filter here to only append if the mean is less than around 255. And we didn't even need average color, but this is a little more complicated because I actually want the average color of each chunk. So when I plot a scatter plot later, it's the same color as the figure. So let's go ahead and run this. Oops, I used C and or P and says C. Okay, right now out is a list of small NumPy arrays. So we're just gonna stack all of the NumPy arrays within this list and make one NumPy array. All right, then we're going to turn average color into a NumPy array. All right, we can actually run the Tisney algorithm now, and we're going to save it to res as results, and it's just going to be Tisney.fit transform, and then we're just going to pass this new matrix, which let's look at it out.shape. So there were 3,800 chunks. And then each chunk is 10 by 10, so 100, and then three different colors, so 300. But running the Tisney algorithm is really just this simple. Uh, it looks like it's just giving us some warnings. Now if we look at the results, we see we just have X and Y values for each of the 3,800 samples. See, it's the same length as out and it's in the same order. So what we can do, let's just plot this real quick as a scatter plot. All right, you see, we just have blue because we don't actually have any labels. So there's only one group. But since we got the average color of each chunk, we can actually change the color of every individual little circle here, not using Seaborn, but instead we're going to use matplotlib and we're going to use patches from matplotlib to add a circle patch over and over again in a loop. All right, so we're just importing this circle patch module from matplotlib, initializing a figure, and then we're looping through every sample's Tisney coordinate in that res object, and we're making a new patch using the x coordinate, the y coordinate. Oops, made a mistake here. So we pass an x and y tuple, the size of the patch, and then the color, which is just the index or whatever position x is an average color and then we're adding it to this subplot and then patches doesn't actually change the x and y dimensions so we need to pass an x limb and a y limb okay so i need to change the average color first actually so right now we have this but it wants values from zero to one so let's just divide this by 255. And then I actually think we have to turn these into tuples instead of lists. So now we have a tuple for the red, green, and blue values for each. And they go from 0 to 1 instead of 0 to 255. All right, now we should be able to run this. And here's our final Tisney plot. I took those pixel chunks from Prixly and I compared their values and made a Tisney plot from it. But as you see, she's got so many different shades of brown that it all just kind of blends together. And then you see here is probably where there's a border between her brown color and then the white color. So I could have added another filter to get rid of some of these. 
Let me just show you one final thing. I can change the shape of this a lot by adding a couple parameters to Tisney here. So let's try changing the perplexity. And I'll pick 30. And then let's do random state as well. So you can just change these values to make the actual output look a little different. Here, now we have additional little chunks. So let's see what it looks like down here. I shouldn't have run that again, but yeah. So that's pretty much it. Obviously, this wasn't the most straightforward way to learn how to do a Tisney plot, um, but you got to see my cat. But really, this is all it takes here. You can either pass a data frame, a pandas data frame, or just a NumPy array. Uh, it's super simple.